Welcome to the NECC. We have week two of League of Legends play. Our first match tonight, you're going to see Central Methodist, the Eagles, who are own one after falling to Illinois Wesleyan's second team, going up against the Champlain Beavers, who are 0-0 zero zero after getting the bye last week. Match number two should be kicking off around 8 o'clock tonight. Has a familiar team, the Hood Blazers who we saw not have the greatest luck in week one. They will be taking on the Upper Iowa Peacocks, who are 0-1, or 1-0, excuse me. They held the one in the first one against Randolph Malcolm. Should be a good set of games. We are just waiting to get into picks here. Bit of a slow start, you know. But, but, but players got to eat, dude. Players got to use the bathroom. All of that. Very excited to be here once again. Uh, the NECC is partnered with ESTV, Esports Television. It's supposed to be 24-hour, around-the-clock Esports Television. Very exciting stuff. You may be watching us through ESTV right now. If you are, salute to you. Uh, ESTV just added Samsung Live, something like that. Sam some Samsung streaming service is now available. So if you're watching us from Samsung, that's pretty cool. That's brand new. You might be like one of the first users to do that. So... Little, little clap, little clap for you. Uh, but we're just waiting for them to actually get into draft. And they are going to kick it off with the choke with the pro draft. We're not spectating that bit. We're going to go in flying blind. Uh, but very, very excited nonetheless. And a very exciting day for League of Legends as a whole. We are made it. If you're a fan of professional League of Legends, today is the first day of the World Championship. It's like Christmas. It's like Christmas if you're a League of Legends fan. Uh, all you have to do is stay up till 4 a.m. <laughs> uh, the games will be happening in Shanghai, I believe. Uh, that, that could be wrong, but the time zones are very, very different. So games are going to run from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. Uh, for the first couple of days, that play-in stage. So that is very exciting. 
let me know in chat who you are cheering for if you're cheering for a team at the world championship let me just pull up chat on my second window here all righty all righty all righty uh but yeah very very exciting time as i said to be a league of legends fan this is this is this is just the greatest time of year uh but that doesn't mean we can't have some great collegiate league of legends as well you know this is the appetizer maybe that main course later tonight if, you, if, you, if you've you got the energy to stay up till 4 a.m to watch some great league of legends being played i believe tl will be playing tonight that's what's up that's what's up or liquid what, what whichever na team that didn't make it right to groups will be playing tonight i believe uh but yeah let me know in chat who you're cheering for at the world championship very excited to hear personally i'm a fly quest kind of guy uh you know trying to save the planet and all that jazz i think the initiatives they do are super cool uh also just love the players used to be a big big unicorns of love fan back in the day we got power of evil we got ignar so much fun to watch um this is, i think this is na's year guys i think this is the year at, at a minimum i think this is europe's year g2 got to the finals last year you know back to back years we got a european team in the finals don't quote me on that but i feel like it is um G2 made it. FPX was too much last year. This is the year. A Western team is going to get it done. I believe. I will I will not be putting any money on that. I don't, I don't have enough money to spare. But as I said, we've got some very, very exciting stuff happening right here. Collegiate League of Legends. So uh, I guess the, the big updates here is that Samira will not be able to play and Yon will not be able to play either so those two champions are what we're looking at for ineligibility i do believe uh, whatever is banned at worlds will be banned here which means we're going to keep playing on patch 1019 i've got the notes open just to relay them we need them throughout we talked about them briefly last week uh the big ones to me azir buff caitlin buff lucian buff, or nerf excuse me all those nerf tf nerf and the, the center nerf Sivir with the buff, Silas with the buff is big in my opinion, and the Ivern buff actually feels really good. Uh, Ivern is a champion that doesn't crack pro play or competitive play a whole heck of a lot, but as a have very heavy utility jungler, I mean, really the premier utility, uh, if you want to use that word, jungler in the game, the buffs make Ivern feel so much more relevant in combat. The CC is longer on the Q, and the shielding is better for frontliners. I think there's some kind of HP scaling. Very, very intriguing to see if Ivan can make any kind of noise. We are going to pan over to chat. Flyquest message has been sent twice. <laughs> NA's year. NA's year. Yeah, C9. No C9. That's RIP. That's an RIP with the no C9. But uh, I, I think it's going to be NA's year. It's got to be. It's got to be. Uh, but yeah, like I said, ahead of us, we have Central Methodist, the Eagles, 0-1, going up against the Champlain Beavers. Zero and zero. I mean, talk about a classic battle. I mean, natural enemies for all of eternity. Beavers? Eagles? Are you kidding me? Does it, it doesn't get bigger than this? Tell me. More more iconic rivalry than beavers and eagles. Y you can't name one. It, it doesn't exist. I, <laughs> for, for eternity, these two have fought for dominance in the Wild Dominion. And tonight... We get to see which one is the true victor. I'm very excited here in week two just to see how stories unfold. Uh, that's one of the many joys of collegiate esports, sports, any kind of competition to me that has a week-by-week a -week format. When we look to our game later tonight with the Hood Blazers going up against the Peacocks, Hood had an ugly loss in the first one, right? Newberry really gave it to him. What can they do to bounce back? Because you know if they come back with a win, that shows so much fortitude. And it shows that they really put the work in outside of our, I was going to say off the rift, but uh, outside of the stream time, outside of the premier game time. They put in the work if they can get this win. Very excited to see that. We're seeing Central Methodist for the first time. We're seeing Champlain for the first time. How will they get their season going? I mean, for Champlain, this is this is your opener. 0-0. Zero zero. You were fortunate to get the buy last week. Maybe you scout out your opponents, get a little bit of a knowledge advantage. But what are you going to do? Uh, first time out, it's the time to make statements. Last week, we talked about first impressions and how important they were. Champlain still has yet to make the first impression. Tonight is the night. As for Central Methodist, the Eagles 0-1 coming up a loss to Illinois. Wesleyan's second team. You got to rally. You have to be able 
to rally? What can you do in the face of adversity? And just seeing these stories unfold over the course of the season is what I'm very excited for. It looks like we do have all the players in the lobby. Uh, no way of knowing if the pro draft is done, but it looks like it is because we are right into picks and fans. If you're just joining us, we have the Eagles from Central Methodist. We've got the Beavers from Champlain, and we've got Biger in the bands. That will be the first one to go on the right-hand side. Playing for the red team will be the Eagles on the left-hand side. The blue side will be the Beavers. Second band is Morgana, so the mages must go. And we see a bit of a, a purple color theme emerging. With the bands here, Thresh will break that. Two supports being banned out by the Eagles as Diana will be taken off the board. Interesting Diana band that must be a very comfort champion for somebody on the CMU squad. We do see that Hecarim taken away was very powerful in every game appeared last week. And right off the bat, Riven locked in by Big Thighs. And that Zillion Jacks coming out. So we are assuming LCS order here. Of course, you are allowed to lane swap and do all these other things. But for the time being, we have to assume this is a Zillion top going into the Riven. Yumi being locked in as the mid laner. There is something happening here. I don't know if they're swapping or if we have the most ridiculous tuned up on steroids. Um, what is it called? Funneling composition you've ever seen. Uh, that's what I want to see. I very much doubt that is what we will see. But it seems like we're going to see some lane swaps here. I'm going to put a little bit of water down the hatch. As Cinder is banned out with the Ezreal. Um, I would love to see someone who can engage here to get on both sides of the team. We do see the Zach come through. There is an Ash can engage with Alt there. So asking you shall be or asking you shall receive. Getting both there, just waiting on the support picks here. Would not be mad to see some kind of shielding champion allow that Ash to live long in the back line. Let Riven and Rexai take care of the heat. Uh, maybe a Nami Karma is a pick that's out there as well. If you really want to go interesting with it. Uh, of course, Janna, phenomenal, still on the table. The only one who's really gone is Morgana. And Karma will be picked up here. Last pick for J-Dog, or G-Og. That's an I, not a D. And it will be Lucian. So what do we make of this composition here? It's got to be Jack's top, Lucian ADC, Yumi support, and Zack jungle. That's the only thing that makes a lick of sense to me here. Like we said, you do have to present an LCS order. That doesn't mean you're not allowed to lane swap. Uh, it's just unusual to see what we assume is going to be every single player lane swapping. So we will see if that comes to fruition, if all the lane swaps happen. If they don't, my initial look throughs at these teams. We're going to start on the right hand side with the red team CMU, Y Eagles Fly. Uh, assuming that Zillion's going to go mid, I really like this composition. Jack's top skills so well late game. Yumi skills so well into the late game. Yumi on Jax will be a problem. My only question mark is this Lucian. You've built this whole scaling late game composition, and right in the middle of it, you have a champion that falls off at 20 minutes. Uh, I mean, Lucian is just so infamous for falling off, and maybe the thought process is, you know what? We have other people that scale into the late game. Uh, we can take a risk. We can take a champion that can manage the early game for us. And that is one school of thought. However, in my mind, I'm, I'm a full sends only kind of guy, right? If I am going to build this whole late game composition, if I'm going to layer it carefully, put all the ingredients on my pizza that is a composition, I want them all to synergize, you know? Zach, Yumi, Jack, Zillion all play towards that late game kind of goal. I mean, Zillion's all just gets better and better as the game goes on as those death timers tick up and up and up. All those ingredients work well. That's a sausage, pepperoni, green pepper, onion. And Lucian is just like, he's like pineapple on that pizza. And don't get me wrong, I love pineapple on pizza. I love Lucian as a champion. It just doesn't go well together. So we will see how the pineapple of this team does shine through, if it shines through. I think that'll be a key to CMU getting the win here, righting the wrongs, and getting their first win of the season. We're going to kick it over to the other side, take a look at the Beavers from Champlain.
Riven in the top lane, Rek'Sai in the jungle, Orianna mid lane, Ash Karma in the bot side. I like this a lot. There's a lot this team can do. I think that as much as it looks like they're in a team fight uh, with the Orianna coming through Ash, I think their pick potential is absolutely massive if they want to use it. Uh, talk about the mobility Rek'Sai brings to the table, the ultimate, just the ability to find one person and take them out. Uh, the same thing can be done with Orianna. If you know you're guaranteed a pick, there's no reason not to shockwave. If you can just whoop, whoop, get that kill, easy. 5v4 across the map. You are adding a value to the team. Riven has so much potential in the 1v1 situation, so much outplay potential, and I think a lot of the fate of this team is going to rest in the top lane with big thighs here for the Beavers from Champlain. And big thighs can't manage the load there in the top side this Jax is just going to run away with it uh ash can get phenomenal picks provided you hit the ulti karma has a lot of lockdown on a single character right a lot of potential for picks and that's that's what you need so i actually really like this matchup it feels like a lot of skills going to have to go into this regardless of who you're cheering for if you're cmu you have to avoid getting picked you have to say, you know what? The only way we lose this game is if we lose this game early. Let's stay vigilant, not die early on, and just snowball our advantage. But if you're the Beavers, you said, hey, we pick well. Let's play to our strengths. Let's get some momentum of our own. Let's get some early objectives. Because you know what? If you get the Dragon Soul, it's an estimated 1,000 gold per character, give or take, depending on the dragon as well. Some variables change. You know, some dragons are better on characters than others. But if you get that Dragon Soul, you can contend with just about every single late game team. I don't care what the composition is. You are in that game, or at least you have a chance to win that game. It's looking like a close one across the board. I really enjoyed the picks and band stages. We're loading in the game. Now is your last opportunity if you don't want to miss the magic. If you don't want to miss the action. Go get the drink. Go get something to eat. I got some water right here. You know, I got to got lubricate the lungs up. Keep the vocal cords fresh. I've loaded the game personally. Once we've hit five seconds, we will pause. Just for a little competitive integrity, for a little bit of making sure that I'm on sync with the director here. And we are going to start in three, two, one. Let it rip. We are in here on the red side. We have CMU. The Eagles coming out. We'll see what Central Methodist can do in their second game of the NECC season. And opposing them on the blue side will be the Beavers hailing from Champlain. We've got game one and match one of the night. And it looks like we might be in for a little bit of a rumpus in the river. CMU is definitely looking for that early action. Surprising considering you do have... The Yumi not doing a whole lot level 1, especially going up against the Karma level 1. Uh, Karma does get that ulti available at every single level. So right away, they're just going to hold in the river. Not quite a 5 point coming out on the other side, but the Beavers are spreading the table here. Not much will happen. No vision gained. Nothing lost. So it looks like we're going to head into the game just on even footing, it looks like that lane swap we were talking about is currently happening. So, that Zillion will be heading mid. That Jax will be heading top. The Zac will be heading into the jungle. Does have smite. First look across the board with runes and masteries. Everything is seeming pretty standard here. One thing to note here is on the Zillion, we do have Glacial Augment. Not always taken, but is probably the most common choice. Keep your eyes on that Zillion. If you want to, to know how these team fights are going to go, it's going to be a lot on what Ori can do to manage movement, right? Once you get the slowing abilities that trigger that Glacial Augment, you can really start doing a lot. In addition to the ease, we're going to stun out right away there. Kata putting in a little bit of work on that Jax in the top lane. We're going to see bottom push in just a little bit. As I said, weird, weird pairing here in the bot lane, in my opinion. We've seen it a lot, but it's just not what I would go for. Philosophically, in league here, I want the synergy. I don't want to pair a weak late game ADC with a strong late game support, but we will see. Provided this Yumi gets late game, provided this Jax gets to the late game, the Eagles are going to be very, very happy with their odds. 
Ori drops the bomb. They're going to get a little bit of damage. These two mid laners, they're both essentially control mages. The Zillion's a little hard to define, in my opinion. Uh, their burst potential isn't massive. Uh, Oriana does get some solid bur burst potential post six. Zillion, if you do hit the double bombs and you have a decent amount of items once you get uh, a rod item under your belt potentially, but until then, not doing a whole ton. You see a gank here, level one, Ryruki going in, Kata looking like it's going to be an early death oh my goodness the flash is going to miss first blood being handed over the big thighs in the top lane that went well for the beavers and that's what they have to do they are playing the composition that falls off sooner so you gotta get some picks and that's exactly what we talked about right we're gonna see what big thighs in the top lane and going mid as well nearly gets the kill on the orange you really gotta be very very careful there very, very careful indeed. Uh, some activity from Wairoki here early on in the jungle on that Rek'Sai. Moving. Absolutely moving in the jungle. They're picking up the Scuttle Crab in the river. They're pinging. They're going to start an invade here. The jungle move phenomenal to start the game. They might even try to find something here in the bot lane. Not sure why Wairoki's looking. Going in. Stone will be land. Big Thighs putting in a little bit of work there. Kata. Drops down some damage on the crackback. Not too much happening. Garrett Marison going in. Not able to get too much. Going to miss the Q there. Ash putting out a little bit of damage. There is logic. Big farm lane in the bot lane so far. And this is not what you want to see if you're piloting the Draven. Being down CS early on. Playing an early game champion. It's going to be tough to dig out of this hole. We'll see what they're able to do. The game is young. You know, nothing's, nothing's set in stone, especially League of Legends. There's so many variables that come in. There's build paths. How do you upgrade your abilities? Where is your jungler going to gang? Where are you roaming to? There's so, so much going on in the game. So we'll see how it unfolds. For the time being, can't be too happy with yourself if you are a fan of CMU here coming in. Oh, the bait, the classic recall bait. Got him with the day one strategy. Big thighs putting in big work in the top lane. Oh my goodness. Two kills to none. The gold lead is going up. Big thighs waiting on that teleport. Trying to serve dominance. Kata, you're only level three. Not quite high enough. Action in the bot lane. Logic has to flash away. The Zap is in. Not going to quite find the damage. Tick, tick. Oh, they will get the finish onto the Zack. Will be able to get the kill. Rek'Sai collapsing down. Geog putting in some damage. Shield applied. Geog going to go down. Zack respawns or flashes through. Smashes them together. Do they have enough? It doesn't look like it. Zack going down. Mitzi not there in time for the save. White Roki going in. Mitzi can do absolutely nothing. Autos dare it once, but it's not enough. Woo. A lot of kills straight there. Shockwave in the mid lane. Ori doing some damage. This is what we're talking about. Neither of these two have a whole ton of burst damage at their disposal early on. Or really, as the game even goes late, one on one, they will just because neither of those champions will have much resistance. But, man, tough, tough start. If you are coming out on the side of the Eagles, the Beavers looking very, very strong right now. They're up more than 2k gold. They are up four kills not of a dragon lover no neutral objectives have been taken off the table trying to bait ori into walking out to get this ward it's not gonna happen and we cut back to the top lane big thighs up two kills to none gonna crack this turret plate get a little bit more gold kata has just looked a little bit hopeless a little bit helpless in the top lane so far in this one oh zach coming through big elastic slingshot flash even bigger Iro Griffin able to get out of a sticky situation with the press of one button. Getting it done. Yumi re rejoining Geog in the bot lane there. Wow. Look at this in top lane. Big thigh. Just playing with Kata. Going in. Drops down the first of the three. Knockoffs Conquerors will proc there. Scoots back in. Kata just trying to hold their own. Down two levels. Down. A lot of items right now. Crafting pot is popped. You're going to see our, our big thighs go all in here. Ooh, 
Ooh, did pop the company pop, but decides to leave it alone. Might be sick. Not a company pop, just a refill potion. Not a signifier of damage. Flash down there. Dolly the Wairoku trying to get it done. Is going to have to run away. Dragon! <gasps> Nearly finishes off Scrumpy there. Ash coming through. Logic picks it up. Just a shot in the back. Logic going to take a lot of damage here. Geog finds themselves in the 2v3 situation. Down they go and nowhere to run for the Ari Mitzi. Going to find themselves six feet deep. Looking like a free dragon for the beavers right now. Champlain looking very, very strong across the board. Just seeding one kill in that bot lane scuffle. But they'll pick up the dragon. They're continuing to win every lane across the board. They're up 5k gold. They have been so, so dominant here. Beavers looking good. Double bomb coming through, not gonna do a whole ton of damage. Pyro drops down a little bit of damage in return, tossing the orb. Whew. Quite a quick start. I mean, we're talking about nine kills in eight minutes, a one-sided start as well for the Beavers. Playing very strong. And if you are the side of CMU, if you are the Beavers, it's tough to not put your mind onto game two when you're down like this. But we'll see if they can stay focused and make a bit of a competition out of the first one. You see Zach clearing the bottom side of the jungle as the Beaver's bot side does run to lane. Zach's picking up. I just wonder if they're going to try to gank somewhere. I mean, Scrumpy has had a few good engages, just not found the damage to follow through and reap the rewards that was killed. So we'll see if that finally does start to come through if Scrumpy doesn't give up on the lanes because that's big. Capped OW in chat. This is indeed a best of three. So we've got a lot of action coming away regardless if this one ends a little bit early. So it looked like it might. The Beavers out ahead. And they're out by a lot. Picked by Stu. Just kind of toying with Kata in the top lane. Playing around this. Harold Wairoki caught out. Double bomb coming through. Scrumpy going low. Wairoki 1v2 potential. Drops to ulti. Resurrect coming through. Good ult from the zillion. But it's probably not going to be enough. Shockwave. There it is. Scrumpy in a whole world of trouble. Big Thighs comes through to clean up yet another kill. 3-0 oh, and 0. Oh. oh my gosh! The Ash Arrow from across the map! Sniper! Get down! Woo! Big Thighs cleans up another one. Oh my goodness! Somebody gotta check Logic Mia for the aimbot. That was absolutely insane. Their lead only continues to grow. Wow. Double bomb coming through. We do have a game pause. We do have a game pause right now at 29. Ooh, we're at 10.05. Sorry, the game pause for 30 minutes. So we're going to see what happens here with the game pause. Why it happened. Uh, looks like a support DC from Garrett Meyerson. So we should be getting into... Yeah, should be getting back into the game here in just a moment. And it is back right away <laughs> at the 10.09 mark. Absolutely insane. Ash Alty coming from the bot lane. Logic, Mia. Whew. Whew. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, great stuff so far coming out from the Beavers. We'll see if they can keep it up in this best of three. A little bit of damage for AG off going in. There's the final chapter. Both all these drops off flashing over. Trying to find the kill. They will find the kill to Logic. Turning around onto Garrett Meyerson now. Shields the self for a little bit of damage reduction. And the speed boost tower is picked up on the top lane. That will be the first tower of the game. Scooped up on the top side. Big Thighs continuing. That's such a big, big impact on this one. Geog pushing in. It's actually pretty big here. For CMU, they're finding a little bit of value in the bot lane. They're, they, they were very much struggling early on. They're going to actually claim a plate. There's a Geog going to walk away with 80 gold, as will the support Mitzi. We'll see if that makes any noticeable impact in this lane match. I mean, they really have to affect who you can affect before affecting the game as a whole. So, if that caused them to start winning some 1v1, some 2v2s, as we saw there, this moment, don't forget this moment. If Geog can somehow get their team back into this game, they're going to back for the time being, going a little spending spree with what they just earned. Ooh, kind of got to be careful. Big Thighs just looking so massive. Has the Essence Weaver, has Ninja Tabi. Working on that next item. Already does have the Kindle Gem. 
tough, tough time for Kata in the top lane. We will see if they can make it to Lake. And we talk about the scaling. It will be a game here. Scruffy coming through. Shockwave not going to be enough. Tower won't finish it off, but Ori will. Picking up a kill. You kind of feel momentum shifting just a little bit here. CMU has picked up two straight kills across the map. They warn up the thinking. Thinking about pushing it, but they're picking up. They have no idea where the jungle is. They don't have good vision on support. They do now. Uh, so they're going to end up just pushing one mid. And Zach's coming for this gank to the bot lane. Will this yield even more momentum? Jared Myerson going in, going very low. Pops the ulti there. Lose it all. That's a lot of damage. He coming through. Scrumpy. Oh, connects it. Can they pick up Logic? Scrumpy going very low. Ulti put in the back. It's not going to matter. Had the passive available. They will pick up one kill. Garrett Myerson, you gotta be very careful. Don't get too much of the skill, but here comes Big Dice. Teleport to the backside. Geog left all alone with the Yumi. Jack's teleport coming through, not the wisest decision. Yumi's gonna take the last bus out of town. Big teleport bot lane by Big Dice. Oh, I love the tower dive here. Uh, big teleport bot, bot side there. Uh, just having the wherewithal to realize that you can be effective. The fact that there was a ward there. Uh, really set up by the team behind the line. Got in. Big Thighs able to put in a little bit of work. Double Bomb coming through there. They can't really do much to contest this dragon. Though. And by do much, I mean there's really nothing at all that can be done. Kata just going to hold the bot side with Ori. Clear waves for the duration. It's all said and done. Now, however, two drags down. Eight kills down. Scrumpy. Trying to find something. It's going to back out very wisely. Uh, notice that the whole team is drawn. And here comes Big Thighs. We do have a second pause. As uh, Big Thighs chasing on Scrumpy there. So we did see uh, during the second block of gameplay, I guess, broken up by pauses, though. Uh, hopefully everything gets sorted out here in just a bit. Uh, we have seen a bit of momentum shift here a little bit. You can feel something in the wind. You can smell it. It's very subtle, but you can smell it. Um, CMU is starting to come back in this game. They're doing the small things right. They have to lean on Geog because we know Lucian kind of caps out in the mid game, uh, early mid game, and then Lucian's all done for the game. So if they can get some value out of Geog here, salvage something that can get them closer to the late game, they have a shot to win this game. CMU is essentially buying time right now as we are back into the game. Big Five is going to give up pursuit. Scrumpy is going to escape. Kata just clearing some waves in the bot side of the map. Staring down this Ash. Ping's coming through. A little bit of action on the top side, but more importantly, this Karma coming back into the bot side. Kata can't stick around for too long. Same level as the duo laners there. and Not exactly what you want to see from the top laner. You see Big Thighs already level 10 in comparison. It's a great start. Be very careful with Kata. You don't want to give over another kill. Already 0-3-0 right now, just farming up. I'm gonna walk right in the trap. There's the ass I'll be coming through. Garrett Meyerson lays down the CC. That's gonna be enough. Logic Mia picking up another kill. A 3-3-7. Double bombs will connect. Doesn't have anything else to follow up with it though. Great play there. And the bot lane coming through. Logic Mia, Garrett Meyerson. Some great teamwork and a lot of patience in that bush for a while holding the ultimate for a while i mean when you hit those ash ults across the map that will it's got to be tough to hang on to them that long so you see some action developing in the top lane here geog gotta run away big thighs scrumpy you're trying to find a pick on the pyro will throw them together back to the top side you know coming through final chapter will get the root that should be a kill and it will be the top lane but a turret is destroyed as well in the bot side ash pushing with Garrett Myerson, they're also sieging that mid tower. So across the map, getting some value. Scrumpy coming through. They're trying to find another kill. Double bombs. There it is. Big Thighs coming in. The second bomb will get the kill. Can they find the shutdown gold on the Big Thighs? It looks like they will be able to tick, tick, boom on the Ignite coming through. That feels significant here. Meyerson got a run. Look for the ward to slam together. It's not going to matter. They don't find a ward, but they will find a, this mid tower. Excuse me. They're going to get some gold from this. It's a great play across the map. And even better to do something with it, right? All too often, you'll see teams get some kills, get a little bit back into a game, but they don't do anything with the opportunity. 
in chat von Quinn. that's true they're not closing the gold gap but in my opinion just because they scale they scale so well late game outside that lucian which is kind of the talk of champs like uh buying time is the name of the game in my opinion so you gotta keep buying time gotta give yourself a shot to get back into this game uh if you can get that jacks big if you can get some of these other members big i mean yumi is just such a force of record of late game and you don't even realize it until you look at the advanced kids like oh they won that game because yumi got so big uh they just got to continue to buy time and they're definitely playing much better right now than they were in the early portion of the game there's a lot more teamwork going on you see those zach elastic slingshots coming through with all that being said they've had to work so hard in the last couple minutes for this game not to be over by the 16 minute mark so it's definitely still looking pretty dire for them but they do have an out and that out is to make this game last as absolutely long as possible so to get there kata will just be farming up the bot lane Rip Gerald is up, being pinged here by the Lucian. Will back, taking Yumi with them. Big thighs, looking for a kill in the bot lane. It's absolutely gonna is gonna find it. Wow! Big thighs showing us something on that ribbon. Whew. Absolutely taking what they want right now. Scrumpy gonna clear a little bit of vision. It's a 5v4 for the time being, which means it should be a free Rip Gerald, especially with Scrumpy on the bot side of the map, and they know it having just cleared the ward so it looks like another neutral objective will be headed the way of the champlain beavers as they are going to just clear mid lane here are the eagles doing anything they can to draw this one out next dragon is up in 35 seconds you can't contest this really uh if you're coming on the side of cmu it's very very tough your options are to try to get a pick, putting you in a 5 4 situation, which you can contest, or just say, you know what, Scrumpy? We'll sacrifice you to prolong this game. They are going to drop the Riptail mid dry law, draw a little bit of tension away, but if Scrumpy dies, it's all for naught. They try to go in here. They might be able to body kill the big thighs. Final chapter. That's a massive pick. And here's a second. They've got two kills. Scrumpy going to stay alive. Big zoomies coming through. Logic, me and Wairoki trying to get some position on the backside of the pit. Scrumpy, push to the backside. Oh, he's going to have the passive proc. Here comes Wairoki. Big shockwave. Look at the combo. Mitzi going to go down. Scrumpy, all that's left trying to get out of the pit will not be allowed. Chasing the jacks away now as well. Ryoki will be able to get this dragon somewhat uncontested. Another neutral hand it over to the beavers. CMU had a really solid engage. They got the picks they wanted, two of them in fact, and they just couldn't pull that dragon out and they end up losing it to a great engage from the backside of the dragon pit. Champlain still looking like they're on the driver's seat of this one is the gold lead. Still looking very, very massive and obviously being up this number of kills, eight kills doesn't hurt. The big thing is three zero dragon lead we are now on soul point this is what we said at the beginning of the game right you get soul point you win the, or you get soul excuse me you win the game as the team that's feeling inferior you need to get it uh, it looks like this is in the game where they absolutely need it but yeah, that, that doesn't hurt the half you know just see how strong you get we are looking at an earth soul for this game making everyone a little bit tankier you're gonna feel that especially on logic and pyro uh, but I mean just making uh, big thighs bigger to kill as well in addition all these things really do add up and it just becomes harder and harder for CMU to climb the cliff here and come back from this one Geog just clearing a little bit there's pinging there's gonna be some action in the jungle here potentially I think they spotted them out though we did see some Mia pings Aaron Myerson moving with Wairoki here Logic man, they are going to converge on Lucian here on the top side. Ori going to get a double bomb here. This could be a kill and a big pick to start the fight if they can find it. But Jackson, the back line, is going to go down before anything else can happen. Garrett gets out. There's the Zillion ulti coming through the Chrono Shift. Channeling, trying to hop out. Will get the Elastic Slingshot to go. Uses the Blast Cone. And they only end up losing one. So not the fight they were looking for. But at the end of the day, not an awful result, but right on the bear now. This is a very decisive call coming through. The Beavers 
trying to end the game right here, right now, and it looks like there's going to be no response. Lucian, the only hope, and they don't even know that Baron's being taken right under their noses. And so Baron will be handed over to the Beavers. Dire, dire times if you are a fan for the e of the Eagles. If you are an Eagle right now, CMU has to pull something out of their bag of tricks if they want to have a shot in this one. It is not looking like they have much time left on the rift in game number one. Ooh, bombs coming through. They're just trying to clear this mid lane a little bit. I'm absolutely not being held hostage. <laughs> oh, chat, you're too funny. You're too funny. Ori fighting here. Kata backing off. They're trying to find some action here in the mid lane. They're just not going to get it going. I mean, if you are the Eagles, you just, you just, you got to avoid fighting here. You got to buy as much time as possible. And, Honestly, knowing what that looks like is very, very tough to know. Uh, getting picks is probably the only solution. But who do you even target? Uh, I mean, usually you'd say, let's turn to the sport. Let's try to find the sport. They're usually uh, the, playing the least dynamic champion in the game, I would say. But this is playing Yumi. Yumi will never not be attached at the hip. So... It's, it's very, very tough. You're never going to find a good opportunity to find anyone who's quote-unquote weak. Because everyone's looking so strong. Why, Roki, not going to find anything there. They're just trying to clear the wave. It's going to be tougher and tougher with this Baron buff. Tower will fall down. This next dragon is up in one minute. One minute. Soul point is being sat on right now. If you are, excuse me. Uh, if you are Champlain, the Beavers looking to close out game number one of this best of three series. 23 minutes have elapsed. Jiang, just, just clearing waves here. Doing all that they can do. Oh, coming through. Oriana Ball not going to do anything further. It looks like every ulti is available right now. So, big fight incoming one way or another to end the game or to save the game. Dragon is up in half a minute. Wairoki trying to find a pick here. Kata will escape with their life there. Now looking towards that Dragon Pit. They're going to have first priority and they'll probably have last priority on it. Given how things are going to ward it up they will scoop up the vision in front of it with the scuttle crab very very easily dragon up in five seconds and it looks like it'll just be handed over by the eagles not much they could have done in the first place that will be the drag soul and it will be a near insurmountable lead shockwave coming through big thighs they're not gonna be able to find the pick they want but that would have just been a little bit of frosting on top of the cake. I mean, they've already got everything else they really could want. Geog holding Wairoki, dropping a little bit of damage. Top wave and bot wave also starting to push into the base right now. It's going to start stacking up. Baron buff is still active, I believe. Oh, no, it's not. Just, just the dragon. So, I mean, still a massive buff. So much harder to kill with that massive, massive shield just swinging around everybody. They're trying to clear this ward. Why Roki will evade the double bombs, will do it just fine, but gonna take a little bit of unnecessary damage. Ultimately, not gonna matter. Got the shield. Uh, it's gonna be healed up in no time. Still just trying to find an opening here, feeling out the defense, trying to find a way to breach the base. Still in the jungle right now. Kata scanning, warding. Turning around, they are just going to back off. Big Thighs taking some more of that jungle, working towards that third complete item in addition to the boots. Gotta love to see the lethality ribbon as chat is pointing out. Just the ribbon in general, not something that you always have the treat of seeing. So, always great to see someone bust it out, especially in collegiate play here. 25 minutes and some change into this one, a commanding lead being held by the Champlain Beavers. Uh, they came out, they hit early, they hit often, and all they are looking for is that last knockout punch to end this game. They've claimed the Drag Soul. They have taken every non-inhibitor tower. 
very, very close. They just got to decide where and when they want to strike, and they should be able to end this game. Cryptic picking up a blue buff here in their side of the jungle. Logic Mia clearing out some waves here. They're, they're taking it slow and steady. Uh, they know they have the mastery. They know they have the drag. So, I mean, they're up 11k gold right now. But... They're still taking a soul. They're being very patient. I think you have to admire that to some degree. Garrett rotating to the top, top side. Excuse me, Wairoki and Logic Mia. They're going to start pushing this in, which will demand an immediate response. Bombs coming through from the Zillion. Ori not going to find a double bomb or enough damage to really ward them off. But they do clear the wave, which is just about as important. We do see a bit of a 1v1 on the bot side. Big Thighs just eating tower shots like they're nothing. Really going for Kata. Kata's the no chance. Ooh. Big Thighs get it done on the tower. Shockwave is just going to catch Ori. Not going to suffer the consequences there. Double Bomb not going to connect. Big Thighs continuing to push in the bot side. Here comes the response. Three rotating in. Double Bomb. They're not going to find anything there on the Big Thighs. And subsequently, top side will be pushed in. Every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. You send three bot, we are going to send three top. And they will get the inhibitor for it. The whole base is being sieged. There are minions left, right, and center. Oh, the Beavers trying to cap off an impressive game number one in this best two out of three. Slow being dropped by Roki. Not going to be able to move fast, but it doesn't really matter. They have no damage to follow up on. Big Thighs trying to go in. Some slows being dropped from the Zillion. This inhibitor will fall. Elastic Slingshot, and they're making their move right now. They're on to Big Thighs. Resurrect here. The, the Zac will be back up following the Zillion ulti, but goes right back down. Does have passive available. Minions being cleared. It looks like the fight's going to be on the top side. Wairoki does pick up the kill on the Zac. Ash ulti will come through. Big Thigh so, so low on the back line. We'll probably just have to back out here. The flash coming in. Wairoki trying to finish this game with a, bit, a little, with a little bit of blood. And will do so. Picking up that kill there on to the second Nexus Tower. This one's going to fall relatively quickly. Ryoki going very, very low and will go down there. But Big Thigh's back on the attack. Full health all kitted out on the Nexus. Hopping in wants yet another kill. Won't get it, but that will be the conclusion of game number one. The Beavers taking it home. We see the GGs in chat. Big thighs. Big thighs. We see the thigh dip in chat. Hey, if I've ever seen a thigh dip, that was it. Beautiful game coming out from Champlain. I'm going to take a quick sip of this water. Beautifully executed there. They knew that they didn't have the better late game comp. What they do, they stopped the early game. Uh, big thigh was absolutely massive. You had to just admire why Roki's play. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. That that seems phonetically how we do it. Why Roki? Um, why Roki's movement in the jungle was absolutely amazing. Talk about the early gank to get big thighs going, and then nearly found a kill in the mid lane as well. Moving down the list, Logic Mia. That snipe. Oh my goodness. Talk about a heartbreaker. In basketball, oftentimes they say that two points isn't just two points. It's about the momentum. One kill isn't always one kill. The momentum of that kill hitting that ash arrow across the map had to feel so, so good. Massive, massive hit on that ash ulti coming through. Whew. As we will see the lobby start to fill up. We are in lobby. They will be doing pro draft, which we unfortunately do not spectate. So you're gonna be you're gonna be stuck just to look right here. Yeah, right here. Just for a little bit though. And then I promise we'll be into game number two and our best two out of three. About an hour has gone by. In about an hour, you will be seeing our second feature match of the night. The Hood Blazers going up against upper the upper Iowa Peacocks, excuse me. 0-1 and 1-0, and no, respectively. We're trying to see if the Blazers can bounce back after being taken out by Newberry. What an absolute dominant showing last week. We are here in week number two, trying to get started with game number two. Uh, but yeah, Big Thighs was absolutely massive. They took, took care of Kata in the top lane. Extended that dominance to the rest of the map. And that was really all she wrote for the remainder of that. Chat. 
Who was our MVP of game number one? If you to whittle it down to one player on this very, very talented team, who are you taking between the Beavers? It's tough for me, but you probably got to go big thighs. Wairoki's in the running. As we said, we talked about just how much right both players did, but man, big thighs was such a difference maker in the top lane. Coming out on a, a champion that's mechanically hard to play right off with the aggression. Absolutely knew what they were going to do, how they were going to execute. Went out and did it. It doesn't get much more simple than that. Brought the pail, lunch pail, brought the drink. Did some work. They put in the hours in the top lane. The nitty gritty. And they got it done. You see the results. Obviously very, very worth it. The thighs. Zoomies MVP. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I think Big Thighs has got to be unanimous MVP uh, for the first game of this best two out of three series. Great play on the ribbon. As we said, not a champion. You see a whole ton of uh, in general, especially in collegiate play. I personally Closing in on probably 100 hours of Collegiate League of Legends being broadcast. I think it's probably one of the second or third RE I have ever seen in Collegiate League of Legends. So super cool to see that brought out. They just reached right in that bag and see what they found. Lobby getting set up here once again for game number two. As soon as we get into actual champ select, you will get an actual champ select here on screen. Uh, yeah, until then, I guess we can talk about what CMU can do better to improve uh, from that game number one. You know, obviously, that's not what they're looking for out of game number two. Um, and what they can really do, I think it starts in picks and bans. As I said, their team, in my opinion, I know a lot of people do like running the Lucian Yumi. I just think that the, the philosophy is so different between the two champions that I want a champion, I want an ADC that can scale in late game if I'm picking the Yumi. I'm full Sent, but that really wasn't their problem. Uh, it was just surviving into the late game. So maybe pick a composition that's a little harder to execute, but puts a little more focus on dynamic gameplay, ganking, and the early game. Maybe get a little bit done here in the mid game. I wouldn't be upset if they ran the Lucian pick back. Uh, just change the rest of the team around. In fact, I think you could run that bot lane back. I wouldn't run it with the Jacks. I think the Zach was overall pretty effective at creating some plays across the map they just never quite had the damage to follow through on that which brings me to the mid lane give me a syndra uh give me someone who can really dish out the damage that's what i am looking for right now uh on the same token though you could go with someone like a zoe has a lot of single shot damage can burst down a singular target very very quickly with the zach you've got a killer 2v2 if you're trying to get some picks so there's a lot of options to toy with i think ultimately they should steer away from how they played last game how they started the picks and bans from last game give me something that can win in the mid game give me a little something that's more geared to securing the bag earlier on rather than saying you know what hands off hands off keyboard we hope we're gonna get the late game we just we just hope that's the game plan it obviously didn't work in game number one. I don't anticipate it working in game number two. And speaking of picks and bans, how does this affect what they pick and ban? I mean, it's obvious that Big Thighs was just absolutely monstrous. I mean, monstrous on that ribbon in the top lane. So I think that is an auto ban. You get the ribbon out of there. There's no champ that really plays like ribbon. Uh, so you, you make them show you something new in the top lane. And honestly, I think top lane was the biggest issue. If you banned three top laners, A, huge sign of respect coming out to Big Thighs. B, I, I don't think it puts you in that bad of a situation. I think you can play around other things. Uh, so interested to see what they do come out with. I believe they should be in the pro draft right now. As I said, we don't have access to that at the time being. So you're stuck with me right here. Uh, very interested to see. As I said, I think they should ban out some top laners. Uh, Big Thighs was the reason you lost that game. Make no mistake about it. Game two, we're taking Wairoki and Pyro to speed run to the finish line. Okay, speed run it. Uh, very reminiscent of the Newberry game that we saw last week. I'm interested to see if CMU has some fight within them. This is where you really find out what is this team made of. Uh, you know, it's not easy 
losing bad. Let, let me tell you, uh, someone who's lost bad a lot of times in their life across a lot of different sports, esports mediums, losing big sucks. Because at the end of the day, you can't be like, ah, man, we were this close. If only I would have done this. If only we would have selected this champion. So it, losing big is tough, but bouncing back from that is a, such a good test of the character. We've got Grinnix in chat saying, Queen, you remember you put the ammo? All right. I'm a college student. That's a basket of clean clothes. All right. Um, let's 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 take back the 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 hearsay a little. The slander. No, it does it does need cleaning. You know what? You you just you just give me an idea what I'm doing this weekend. <laughs> Playing league, cleaning the old bedroom. Uh, but yeah, we're going to find out what CMU is made of. Um, one way or another, we're going to find out if they're up to the task of not only competing with the strong beaver team but also competing after a game where you lost so so poorly in such a decisive manner so we will see once again necc is partnered with estv as you're going to see is that over here that should be to this side you'll see you'll see it pop up um yeah that is that is right so we got we got it right that time um Streams our games to a lot of different platforms. Super cool. Uh, as of today, you can get it on some Samsung services. Super cool stuff. Uh, just super cool to see esports growing in this space in this time. Uh, obviously, COVID is a national tragedy, and just to see that people are still trying to do good, still trying to grow an industry during that period of time, really just gives me so much hope for what's going to happen for esports after. Um, there's so so much going on, and just. And just esports in general, right? Uh, there's so much content being produced. I mean, you're sitting here right now watching collegiate esports like they're collegiate sports. So uh, it's just such a cool space. It's only getting bigger. I really appreciate everyone being here with us tonight. We're going to have game two here shortly. As, oh, let's just make sure I was in the spectator slot there in the lobby. Oh, yeah, game two should be coming here shortly between those Champlain Beavers who are up 1-0 against the CMU Eagles. We're, we're getting some, is that real in chat? Uh, looks like someone mispicked in pro pick, uh, pro draft, excuse me. Um, once one second's finished, we'll be in here. As I said, CMU trailing by a game if you're just joining us. Ugly start for them. Uh, I mean, beautiful start if you are cheering for the Beavers. The Beavers came out in game number one and took care of business. They played to their compositional strengths. They got it done. They worked as a team. Big Thighs are game one MVP. They played absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing League of Legends. The mechanics were just so tight. So, so tight. Uh, it just worked out so well. Diving Tower. A lot of... <laughs> A little bit of BM, a little bit of DM, uh, waiting on the teleports, dropping the emotes, but it's all in good fun. We're going to see what comes out in the top lane for game number two, but we have hit our picks and bans, so let's send it back on over to that screen. <laughs> Colin, Colin, my room gross. Yeah, and you know, you know, I, I live here. It happens. <laughs> As we are heading in, we will see the Vigar ban for a second straight game, Rek'Sai ban. Hecarim will get out of there. So CMU will put a little bit of respect out of the jungle position. But they leave the ribbon on the table. So here is a chance for Big Thighs to lock in the same champion in the top lane. Lucian will be taken off the table. CMU looking like they're going to start off with an Orn. Very, very solid pick. You know, it's kind of been... The year of Orn, the year of Set, and the year of new champions in the top lane. We will see Camille and Trundle selected from the other side. So I'm going to expect this Camille to be sent to the top lane here. So we're going to see Big Thighs on something new. Something equally mechanically challenging here. Uh, maybe not equally, but still in the upper echelon, in my opinion, of mechanically challenging. Syndra locked in something that I said I wanted to see. Out of CMU's comp, so very good there. We will see our second round of bands coming through right now. There goes the Diana off of the board. Waiting on the rest of them. Uh, I, I like 
both these teams or just one or the other to select an ADC with a little bit of mobility right here. Oriana, Trundle, Camille, there's a lot of way to set up plays. There's not a lot to appeal for your ADC right now. Uh, if, if you do engage, as we will see in the Kali Band taking off the board. And Ezreal, a Tristana, I think those are both great picks. Zillion will be taken off the table as well. Some things we saw in the last game. So the scouting report says get that Zillion out of the mid lane. Game two is upon us. Very, very excited. Shout out to everyone in chat. As it looks like chat has become the Big Thigh fan club. <laughs> oh, man. We will see Big Thighs on the Camille this game. Oriana there. Ash is selected. There's the Brandon. There is the Ezreal. Uh, so we talked about, I said, I like either team to scoop it up, given that it felt like there was a lack of appeal. There it is. Ezreal Yumi. The Missile Silo as I like to call that bot lane combo. They can do so much from such a range. It's just hard to interact with. It takes a lot of interaction out of the bot lane. The lane with the most interaction. You know, we've got two players on each team, slaying spells, there's a lot happening, but Ezra and Yumi have the ability to just step back out of fights, zoomies to heal up. They have so much escape, so much mobility, very tough to deal with. On the other side, we just have this damaging, so much damage coming through. The Ash and the Brand, wow. Uh, there's a lot of damage coming through and a lot of ability to set up fights. Ash healthy, as we saw, Logic and Mia was absolutely on point hitting those last time. Brand can also set up fights, but it's a little bit tougher. Brand probably has some of the least reliable CC out of supports. I mean, Zillion's up there. Any support requiring you to hit two spells, combo them together, uh, is just going to have an inferior rate of connecting on that CC. As we are just in the spectator delay for competitive integrity here. Good. Going to break down the teams a little bit more. We're going to start with CMU side. The Eagles, they really need a win if they want to send this one to game number three. Kicking off in the top lane with the Orn. And Orn is a pick that I absolutely love from the bottom of my heart. Kata on the Orn. Uh, especially we saw how dominant Big Thighs was last game. Orn allows you to sit back a little bit. You can take some punishment with that Grass Queen dying. You really just got to get that one auto off. Steal a little bit of health, and you are absolutely chilling out. The more important thing is Orn is so strong in the late game, not because Orn themselves is strong, the ornaments they can place on teammates, right? Uh, so once you start upgrading these items, there comes a point in the late game where it doesn't become who's playing better, who picked the better late game composition. It becomes, well, my items are just statistically better than yours. They provide me more stats. They're worth more gold. There's nothing that you can do. So... It's the minute numbers in the late game. We'll see if that does come into play because obviously last game we didn't even hit the late game. Dominant performance by the Beavers moving it down. Scrumpy on the Zach, a pick that I said I'd like to see run back. And here it is. Scrumpy played well, in my opinion. And that's where I'm looking. Scrumpy is my playmaker. I wouldn't be surprised if Scrumpy was calling shots. Obviously, we're not on the comms. We have no idea. Scrumpy was making it happen with that elastic slingshot getting in there. Getting knockups, drawing them together, had a lot of sick plays, just could never find the damage from the rest of the team to follow up. And that's where this mid lane pick comes in. Ori scooping up the Syndra has a massive amount of burst, can also create their own plays, right? Syndra can also just create plays on their own. So we will see if that comes through. I'm very excited to see Ori on this pick. Zillion feels like it has a little bit too much nuance to just be thrown into any composition. Syndra feels a lot better here. A lot more damage. Does have the CC. Less utility, but I think it's going to be better in the long run. Ezreal Yumi in the bot lane. We've been talking about this pairing a little bit. The Missile Silo. Just going to be chucking out Warheads left and right. Very hard to track down. I like this pick a lot as well. Overall, the composition feels pretty safe. It feels pretty safe. I like the picking. From CMU, they definitely put a lot more thought into this composition than last game's composition. Quickly, we're going to toss it over to the Beavers. See what Champlain is cooking with starting the top lane with the big thighs on Camille. Looking good. I mean, I, I like this pick a lot. We saw the dynamic playmaking with the Riven. I said there wasn't a champ that really plays like Riven. Camille brings that damage. Camille brings the dueling ability. Camille brings the mobility. I like this pick a lot. Trundle, able to take these tanks down a peg. 
So I like that option a lot. You're going up against the Zach. You're going up against the Orin. You can steal the stats with the ulti. You can really put some tanks into the paper shredder. Just get them up out of there. Excited to see if that comes through for them. We're loading into the game now in the mid lane. We do have the Oriana run back from Pyro Cryptic. Pyro's making plays last game. I mean, there's nothing else to it, right? Uh, much like a point guard in basketball, you're not going to take the ball out of your best player's hand if they're out on fire. Kept the ball in Pyro's hand by letting Pyro once again take Oriana. I've loaded into the game. Once again, we're just going to take a quick pause at five seconds. Competitive integrity, making sure the broadcast is right on time for you people at home. I am now paused at five seconds. We're going to start in three, two, one. Let it rumble. Game number two in this best two out of three on the left-hand side of the screen playing for the blue team. We've got CMU. The Eagles are trailing one game to none to this red team on the right-hand side. The Beavers hailing from Champlain. They are trying to finish off a sweep in our first matchup of the night. And I'm gonna I'm gonna check chat quick because I, I I've got pinged a few times. I see I see whoa. Hit one true whoa. Peer pressure. By the end of this game, I'll hit you with a whoa. Or we're talking about like a whoa or a Ric Flair like a woo. Cause you know, I'm, you know, I'm just versatile. You know what? <laughs> what can I say? There's a range of there's a range of sounds that I can make. As we are in the game here. I will I will be keeping my eye on chat. A real whoa. All right. By the end of the game, we will get a we will get a whoa. Uh, hopefully generated from this exciting gameplay. Game number two, CMU little bar going up against the Beavers, hailing from why uh, Champlain. <laughs> Champlain keeps slipping my brain. Uh, just can't quite remember that one. Both teams gonna take a pretty passive approach here. To start the game, Red Buff will be started from Scrumpy and CMU. Bot side also started by Wairoki. And the rest of the Beavers. Gonna expect both these jungles to, to pass bot to top. We did see both of them gank early on. We'll see if that continues. I'd like to see Scrumpy be a little bit more aggressive. We do see Big Thighs just trading here. Not afraid to trade in the top lane. So dominant last game game continues here the q is going to miss going in big thighs laying down damage in addition kata gonna take some wave damage there so the dominance already starting in the top lane and across the map as geog is forced off of the wave there garrett gonna take a little bit of damage on the crackback big thighs going in kata tosses out the q still stays low you gotta be careful Big Thighs still has Flash available. We know Big Thighs is not scared of Flash again, playing aggressive. Gonna take a little bit of wave damage here. Big Thighs going to drop a Smart Ward there. Another Smart Ward would have been over the wall into the elbow there, uh, considering that Elastic Slingshot has such a long range. Big Thighs put down a little bit of damage here, but actually, good job by Kata. Land landing most of that W, getting a decent amount of damage. Couldn't get the auto to trigger the extra damage of the Brittle ultimately wasn't enough there pyro trading in the mid lane there we just look at the cs difference across the board i mean it's very early but we are still relatively close across the board right now our biggest gap is looking like four in the jungle three in the mid lane two in the top lane now we're all not up in the bot lane right now we're gonna send it right back to the mid lane ball being tossed out cryptic just trying to take this farm before the the tower excuse me does so just clearing out these waves i wouldn't expect either team uh in the solo lane to really go in aggressively the center will have some damage or you will have priority in my opinion to really get something going here on that syndra in top lane i'm not expecting a whole ton of aggression but big thighs has proved me wrong once in the past and same in the bot lane honestly just with how mobile that ezreal missile silo composition is they're gonna be able to evade a lot of the damage i don't think we're gonna be seeing very many kills early unless they come at the hands of a gank scrumpy does have a last clean shot it's a great tool and Rasa, they are a little bit pushed up right now so we'll see if geog uh requesting gank, some kind of ping comes through Zach is backing right now. We do see some pinging happening. 
Sungle potentially looking to set up the gank here. Mia Ping into the bush saying, hey, is there vision here? Do you know? Bot lane unsure. Zach will ping him is going for a gank here. So keep your eyes on the bot side of map. They're on the map. Scrumpy will be heading in for a bit of a bot side gank. We'll see if they can play right into it. Pushing in. Here comes the gank mid lane. Wairoki coming through. Wow. Beautifully played there. Displacing both the ganker and the lane assignment. A little bit of action in the mid lane. Nothing's going to happen there. Still looking bot side. They're going to be able to spot the Zach out though on the ward. We're going to see if they're able to rack in time. To this elastic slingshot coming through. Still staying pretty far up as it looks on the map. Not fearing the gank at all. Everyone in the bot side is level 4 right now. Zach Scrumpy is under level by one level. First dragon is up. So both teams just kind of dancing around bot side. Dancing around mid. Dancing around this first dragon objective. No moves being made yet. Big thighs. Does get brittled on. Oh, and there's the knockup coming through. Going to take a tower shot, but holding up much better than top lane. Kata playing this matchup very, very well. Makes you think, uh, why did Big Thighs not run it back with the Riven? Riven was not banned, I believe, unless there was a wrong champion selected and they meant to ban Riven and they worked it out in chat, but when we saw Riven wasn't banned, a little bit of action going on here. Garrett laying down damage. Logic putting some arrows in the back as well. Geog will escape with Cat in tow. Allowing them to just free farm a little bit more. Their farm lead is growing. Closing in on being 10 CS up. Up 9 right now. Kadeit. Big Thighs coming in. You don't really want to fight and wave, however. Especially with how well this Orn is being piloted by Kata right now. Kata is going to back at level 6. Scoops up some items. Does already have that Bami Cinder, which is absolutely massive. Zach coming back to the bot side. Trying to find some action here. Grumpy, what do you think? Is now the time? Mia Pings has been spotted out. Garrett going to be able to clear the war here. Last slingshot coming through. Not going to hit any of it. Scrumpy going to take a lot of damage on the crackback pillar coming through. Why Roki will just use it to clear the ward. Bites the ward. And it looks like they're going to try a two-man drag here. Keeping Ash bot very smart. Keep the pressure applied. Syndra collapsing. See if they have a play. I mean, Zach's still on the backside of the pit. You have to think of Elastic Slingshot's range here. You can definitely steal from a multitude of angles. You just need to get the vision. Scrumpy has no vision. They're not going to be able to get on top of this. 900 HP left onto the dragon. Going in. Alti being popped. Pyro. Big Alti coming through. Ash on the backside. First blood will fall. Cinder does pick it up, but will die on the back end. Scrumpy going to go down, popping the passive. Geog trying to play a little bit of defense. There's the teleport coming through. Big plays from the top side. Kata atoning for the mistakes of last game. Why Roki does pick up Scrumpy. It looks like it's going to be not quite a 3v3. The teleport didn't even come through. Geog running. Mitzi falling off. There's nothing a house cat can do. Going down they pick up the dragon and they pick up four kills there wow getting it done despite looking a little bit shaky there despite the coordination with the teleport coming through uh the teleport must have been canceled on the top side right we obviously don't have that information uh given just how auto spectator works but teleport coming through and then end up canceled so orin must have been cc displaced or something Great play there, scooping up the dragon, getting the kills on the back end, uh, despite losing first blood, right? That fight started as a 5v4 situation. Little knockup coming through. Big Thighs trying to continue fighting here. Over the wall, elastic slingshot. They're going to find it. Big Thighs may go down here. A lot of damage coming through. Smite is dropped. Big Thighs goes down. Kata picks up the kill. Kata having a much stronger performance on the orn compared to the Jacks last game. Garrett coming through. Does get the first proc there. Just has to hit the Q for the stun. Will do so. Cobbled with the arrow. These two are not just on the same page. They're on the same word on the book. Mitzi going to take a little bit of damage. Pillar to boot. They will not dive at this point in time. But if you're Mitzi, you really do have to back. Wow. Garrett Meyerson just chasing down the enemy. Dropping the CC. Getting the arrow to follow up. I'm not sure if Logic Mia can miss one of those. 
but on the top side of the map they will trade some plates in this tower for the rift herald so all in all both teams can't be too too upset about that one now knotted up uh one apiece on these neutral objectives a dragon versus a rift herald we're gonna see if they use this rift herald top or they hold on to it it's always the big question in my mind you know there's an ideal health in which you should rift herald the tower uh, and it's one there's two and a half plates remaining because rift herald will be able to just take it most gold efficient but what lane as we already see the Ornhorn coming through not a, playing aggressive as i said trying to tone for last game trumpy still in the vicinity not going to be able to land that skill or that elastic slingshot right there who much different feel to this game than the last one cmu very much in the thick of this one they are trailing, no doubt, but they're much more in it than they were last game at this point. Big Thigh starting to clear top. We did see Kata back, walking back to lane now. Was not able to use that first full item. Blue buff will be awarded to Pyro Cryptic there. Going to be able to run. Oh, no. Ori with no vision. Just running in, trying to find something. Zach coming through, trying to save Ori, but it's not going to be enough. Does get the ulti before dying off, but it's not going to matter. Big Thighs responding. Scrumpy, nowhere to go. No place to hide. We'll end up dying. Seven kills to two. Brand trying to find something here. Garrett Meyerson playing a little, little bit cheeky, trying to find some damage over the wall. Not going to matter. Geog placing down a little bit as well the zoomies gonna provide some big deals but still getting half health and just gonna pop the ulti it may be enough one more bounce geog tick tick oh the arcane comet won't get it done garrett thirsty for blood last chapter ashalt not gonna fight its target but garrett will mitzi Ooh, mitzi you can't mess around right here doesn't really have many damaging abilities only one and the zoomies is the only other combat relevant one will go down as well so mitzi Feeling a little spurned, turns around and will die. Garrett, 4 0 oh, 3 right now. Whew. What a start for Garrett. This brand support has come through in a number of ways. Here's a tower dive. Big thighs going in. Will get the brittle charges. Will not get the chance to activate them though. Kata backing a little early here. Just got back to lane. You gotta think that this is going to hurt. Decides to turn it around. Drops the Q. Not gonna follow it up with the E for the knockup. Just trying to stay alive in the tower. There's a knockup. Drops the brittle. A lot of damage. One more tower shot. Not gonna quite do it. But Kata played that very, very well. Warded off. Big thighs. Able to get some more farm. Closing in on that Sunfire kick. Warhorn coming through. Big thighs. Got a little bit greedy. The flash. Oh, the counter flash. Not going to be able to find it. Big Thighs going to escape with just a little bit of health. Turning around. Nonetheless, as we've been saying all game long, Kata has definitely played much better. This is what I was talking about. How do you respond to getting beat? Uh, and getting beat fully, you know, across the board. It wasn't, it wasn't very close. Kata has definitely responded the way you want your team to respond. And that is what can be said right now. E coming through. Scrump is playing a little bit too aggressive. Ash Arrow will find its target. Crocs the passive. Stands almost no chance. Oh my goodness. And for their efforts, Ori will die as well. Big thighs. Pops the ulti. Great use of the teleport and the, the new speed boost. But not going to be able to find the kill onto the orange. Kata lives for the moment being... Big Thighs, very aggressive play. That's what you like to see. Very reminiscent of the effort last game. Ooh, Geog, you got to be very, very careful standing there. There is a team of four. They are bloodthirsty. They are suited and booted. They have so many items built comparatively. Teleport coming through to the top lane. Kata. Just going to clear that wave out. Trading with Big Thighs very, very well. This game, as we said, will find the knock up there to the wall. Big Thighs fighting. There's the brittle charges. Kata winning this trade for the time being. Just got to be careful. I mean, Big Thighs has no alt. That Ornhorn will be up sooner. It does look like with the right hand side of your screen, the left hand side of your screen, just counting those alt timers. So may have a window of opportunity when the Ornhorn is up to go in and to get a kill on the Big Thighs. But just standing on the tower for the time being. 
Kata content looks like building some items does have that fully completed sunfire cape now 15 or 14 20 excuse me mia pings in the mid lane coming out from the beavers but they do find the cinder eventually no neutral objective on the map for another 52 seconds is the next hero will spawn and another three full minutes for our wind drag to get onto the table two drag lead right now for the beavers coming over the wall going to find akata there oh does get the knock up with the ornhorn kata unstoppable brittle here comes the zack elastic slingshot pops the alti scrumpy picks up a kill next on to wairoki wairoki may have bit off a little more than they get you kata trying to turn not the move doesn't find any damage with the w scrumpy now running gonna have to get a miracle elastic slingshot off here won't get it to go does go down and look at the bullying happening in the bot lane as well they are proxy farming champions just about standing so far behind theirs they're going to find Ori here finds themselves in a 2v1 situation does get some damage out drops the ulti will be able to trade kills in the 2v1 so impressive getting some value there but man the team is just down by so much after that play really felt like they trickled into that fight they just needed to get out and cut their losses well, as i said ori does find a kill out of the back and getting a little bit bigger starting to do a decent amount of damage and wairoki will be starting in on the second rift herald of the game unnoticed here kata going in oh overshot the elastic swing shot that one has got to hurt we're gonna see a full-fledged team fight looks like over this rift herald alti is popped by the brand so much damage coming through garrett myers in the difference maker luba trying to throw some hands there nearly puts up a kill of their own elastic slingshots out of there their only chance to steal this objective now would be a miracle mystical shot or two shot barrage excuse me it's not gonna come through it's not even off cooldown right now big thighs pushing in the bot lane scooping up some more gold across the map something this team has shown they are very good at doing ori coming through not gonna land the damage big thighs will hit an ability in return as we are gonna see a fully fledged lane swap here and oh no four man tower dive top lane popping blast cone getting over the wall want to close up all windows of escape just gonna let the tower take care of the rift herald all these coming through that will be a kill picked up mitzi gotta run not going to be able to find any salvage there they will get the tower they do get both kills it's a 5v3 across the map ash arrow coming through another hit oh my goodness pyro following up they're not going to find any more cc but pyro like shooting fish in a barrel with a rocket launcher there are fish guts everywhere just cannot miss with these ash arrows Ornhorn coming through just using the through the way scrumpy trying to find an angle to get in but you don't want to use your e to jump right on top of a buzzsaw Whew. pushing him in lane here garrett myerson has so much damage across the game has played really just a phenomenal game we'll get the cc off so much damage scrumpy tick tick boom myerson picks it up off the dot damage just absolutely burninating the countryside right now Whew. this brand play has been phenomenal the ash play has been phenomenal just across the board the beavers are looking so good and remember this is their necc debut they did draw the buy last week we talked about how important first impressions were last week well here are the beavers giving it their best putting on for champlain doing it in a big big way next dragon will be up in five minutes after scooping up that wind drag it is wind soul a uh, soul point here for the beavers they have just done everything right the big things the little things uh, there's not going to be much fault to be found when they watch back this vod review kata spotted out on award they're just gonna clear out the waves it seems like just about nothing can go right from this point in time you look at the gold differential 12k gold diff i mean you look at the top score tells really the story of this whole game utter domination from the beaver it looked a little close early on but at this point approach, approaching on 20 minutes now looks pretty similar to last game 
Uh, Garrett Meyerson doing a lot more than last game. I mean, that, that's the big difference for me is you have another damage dealer. And usually you'd say, well, my support doesn't have the, or my ADC doesn't have the peel that they're looking for now. It doesn't matter when no one can even get close to your ADC just from the sheer damage. Garrett Meyerson, cheeky play here. Will pop the ulti shutdown gold though. Will be transferred over to the Yumi as they pick up Pyro. Garrett caught out. They maybe put off a little more than they could chew here. Heal. Meyerson gets brought together. Shutdown gold. This could be the fight they wanted. Ori coming over. Final chapter. Wairoki, the last one alive with the Ash. Logic going down quickly here though. Oh, but now before they take no Geog. Teleport coming through. Kata. He's over, Ornhorn. Horn. The smite will be enough to pick up the kill, turning around on the big thighs. Kata flashing, Stumpy in tow. Here comes Ori to the back line. 2v2 situation. They may just have the damage to scoop this one up. The Eagles trying to find their first team fight win of not just the game, but the whole match. Oh, Ori, a lot of damage. The Yumi will escape with when it's all said and done. When the dust clears. Not a bad fight for the Eagles. Trying to stall time and get back into this game. Sloppy positioning, in my opinion, from Pyro and Garrett. They were playing a little bit cheeky. They were playing with this massive lead. And, you know, they, they really split up more than two. Ori turning around. Good micro play, but the Raptors. <gasps> Let's zoom. He's coming through. Ori still escaping with their life, 21 to eight. And Baron will be gone in a pond. They have no vision, I believe, so they're taking it right under their noses. Zach not even in position to respond. Very reminiscent of the Baron call from last game. And Baron is one minute young right now. True shot barrage coming through. That's not itchy. Zach getting in position. You need an absolutely massive elastic slingshot, one you're just not gonna be able to find. On the back end, you're not even wanting to fight in the 4 you one situation. Coming through, there's another Ash ulti. As I said, fish in a barrel with a rocket launcher. Whoa! Look at the accuracy on those arrows. Logic Mia does not miss. I don't know who's drawing the beavers next week, but you had better be Scared of the ultimate abilities. Garrett Byers said going low. Backing off. Wairoki. Here is the push. They're able to hold for the time being. But this game is getting grim. It is getting dark. Another turret falls. Scrumpy trying to be 1v1 with Pyro. Oh, there's a shockwave coming through. The minions there to provide a little bit of damage. Big thighs. Didn't have quite the same impact this game, but still has a bag on their head worth 150 gold. They're sieging the mid lane now. They've refocused their attention. Dropping the wards, just starving out the eagles from resources. Kata going in. Big thighs. Maybe in trouble here. Horn Horn coming through. Oh, good flash to get out of that sticky situation. Refocusing now are the Eagles. Ori taking out a word. Geog and Kata trying to find something useful to do on the map. But really the only thing you can do, clear out waves, get vision of your own jungle. Because very soon, if not right now, uh, if it weren't for the fact that all the beavers had recalled, you, you would it's not safe to step in your own jungle. Just the amount by which you're down, the fact that you're about to be down drag soul in 20 seconds, which is something that I would hope Scrumpy is aware of. Scrumpy has to try to put the team on the back. Scrumpy's got to go for a steal here. Ooh, they're going to find Scrumpy here. This is probably a pick. Another arrow lands. Oh, my goodness. Scrumpy, tick, tick, boom. Garrett Myerson picks up yet another with the dot damage. 7, 1, and 8 right now. An absolute explosive amount of damage from the support. Garrett Myerson going to zone. Maybe just steal that red buff for himself. Hey, you know what? The sport gets undervalued. Let me get something nice for myself. As Drag Soul is picked up, those ultimate abilities will be coming up cooldown a lot quicker. More importantly, you will be receiving the speed boost when you buff. Important on some, not all. I tell you what, it's going to feel very good on that trundle. trundle. Why Roki is going to appreciate that so, so much. Logic taking care of wards here. As you said, just starving resources from the jungle. Applying those stacks of blaze. The last of slings are coming through. Oh my gosh, big nice under tower. Fighting a kill. Looking for a little more potentially. We'll just get out there. Ooh. 
does connect the punch. Big Thigh still under tower. Wairoki will get a kill there. Zack is no more. Drops the ulti. Big Thigh's fighting under Nexus Tower. Going to get yet another kill. Ori has fallen. Myerson sidesteps the E there. Unstoppable. Doesn't even matter. The Orn falls down. Double kill. The Beavers. It looks like they are going to finish off a two game to zero sweep here. Logic hitting the towers. They've absolutely locked them inside their own fountain. I didn't see if that Ash Arrow connected, but based on how the game has gone, I'm sure it did. I don't know how to dance, but Logic Mia can take the lead. Oh my gosh. Game number two, just about in the books. They're up for blood before it ends, though. Zach. Passive will proc Nexus's will fall, and the Beavers will take this series two to zero. Woo! You gotta love that ending. The Beavers wanted it, man. They wanted it. Those Beavers put on for Champlain last week. If you weren't fortunate enough to not be here with us, which Right on your calendar. Do something. I mean, there's League of Legends being played. It's exciting stuff. The NEC's popping off. Um, we talked about first impressions. How a lot of people say you can determine how a season will go based on a team's first performance. How they go out will determine how they end, how they do throughout the season. The Beavers sat at home last week. They didn't have a chance to make an impression upon us. But in their first game of NECC play, these Champlain Beavers put on an absolute show looking absolutely phenomenal on the other side cmu is back to the drawing board tough playing up against an opponent that big and going to own two is definitely tough we've talked about time and time again you know it's, it's that cheesy rocky goal right it's not about how hard you get hit it's how it's about not about how hard you can hit it's about how hard you can get it and keep getting back up what can the eagles do next week to get back up what can they find in this bot review that will really be able to help them out? Uh, our next game is starting in 20 minutes here. So I think we're actually going to take a quick break aside. I'm going to reach out quick and I'm going to respond before we do that. Because you guys are absolutely getting <laughs> Ethan hit the whoa. Hey, did someone clip it? Did y'all clip the whoa? Because if you didn't clip it, I mean, what, what, are you even do <laughs> what, are you, what are you even doing here, huh? We got to clip the whoa. The whoa. I, we need it. We need it. That's the rallying cry, all right? So if everything is good on the end of my director, I think we're going to take a quick step aside, but do not go anywhere unless it's to the fridge to grab some more refreshments because we've got the Hood Blazers who are on one going up against the 1-0 Upper Iowa Peacocks. Stay tuned, guys.